Hi, we're going to look at exam number 3B, the review. So this is the second half of um, what we'll make up for exam 3. And this is everything on matrices that we've been doing. And so we're going to be able to use a matrix to solve a system. We're going to make sure we know what inconsistent and dependent means when we're talking about these systems. You should be able to do operations on matrices, matrices which means you should add them, subtract them, multiply them by a scalar, and multiply them by each other. And then also finding the determinants and using determinants to um, use Kramer's rule to solve a system. Um, be sure that you're going to review all handout pages, handouts, and homeworks, not just um, this review sheet. This just to give you a few more practice problems. So the first thing that we have is a little two by two system. There's two equations and two variables, and we need to solve it using, let's see, we have five different methods here that will be kind of similar. So I'm going to move over a little bit. Let's see. First, let's try our substitution. So substitution and elimination are the methods that we used on our last exam. And what's really nice about them is if you're comfortable with those, then you can find out what the solution is supposed to be and then kind of use the matrices um, and be able to check that you're right um, by kind of seeing it with these methods. So substitution, I want one of the equations to be solved for a variable. So if I look at the second equation, that looks actually easiest to get a variable alone because there's no coefficients in front of the x. So if I minus the 2y over, I get x equals 5 minus 2y. So I'll be able to take that and sub it in for my x. So that's going to look like negative 3 times 5 minus 2y minus 5y equals negative 13. So that's negative 15 plus 6y minus 5y equals negative 13. Combining my like terms, we have negative 15 plus y equals negative 13. Add 15 to both sides, we get y is equal to 2. So as soon as we know the value of y, then we have to find x. You can plug back to any of the first two equations, or even this one that we moved around a little bit. I think that might be the easiest. So we have x is equal to 5 minus 2 times we plug the 2 in there. And so that will be x is equal to 5 minus 4, which equals 1. So we're getting x equals 1 and y equals 2. That's going to be our solution to our system. So we have that as our solution, but we want to try different methods. So the next method that we want to look at is elimination. So I'm going to kind of scoot over here, and we're going to look at elimination. So we haven't done anything with matrices just yet. So let's see which variable will be the easiest to eliminate. I think it will be the x here, because if we multiply by negative 3, or not negative 3, that would just be positive 3 on both sides, that's going to become 3x plus 6y is equal to 15. And the bottom, we're going to get negative 3x minus 5y equals negative 13. So now with this system, if we combine sides, we can see that the three x's will cancel, and we're going to get 1y equals 2, which is matching with what we got previously. So then we're going to re-plug uh, it in into any equation that we want. Let's plug it into the second equation. That'll be x plus 2 times 2. So let's equal 5. That's x plus 4 equals 5 minus 4 minus 4. We get x equals 1. So still same solution. So the next method we're supposed to use is um, Gaussian elimination. So Gaussian elimination says that we want to try and turn this matrix, well, first we need to create the augmented matrix for the system. And our goal is to get a diagonal of ones with a zero down below. And then we can use back substitution. So this is my goal. And our augmented matrix will be negative three, negative five, negative 13, one, two, five. So my first goal, what I like to try and do, is make the 1 in the upper corner. So I see a 1 in my second row, so I'm going to take row 1 and row 2 and interchange them. And we're going to kind of scroll this way. So that's going to be 1, 2, 5, negative 3, negative 5, negative 13. So then the next part that I want is to make the negative 3 go away. Well, that would need a positive 3. So if I take positive 3 times that row 1, where there's the one I just made, add that to row two, that could be my new row two. So let's 
so that will be, again, row one stays the same, it didn't change, but row two, I can show my scratch work, three times row one would be a three, six, 15. Adding row two to that, so that's negative three, negative five, negative 13, zero, one, two. So that's gonna be my new row two, zero, one, two. So now it looks like the form that I needed. So by Gaussian elimination, I would say, okay, let's rewrite these. X plus two Y equals five and Y equals two. So I know Y equals two. So then I'll back substitute that and have X plus two times two equals five. So X plus four equals five minus four. We get X equals one. Now the next method, Gauss-Jordan elimination, that's just going a little bit further. So imagine that we didn't stop there and we just want to create that reduced row echelon form. So that's the ones with the diagonal, um, zeros below, but zero in the upper corner. So I'm gonna continue on with what we were just doing, but instead of looking at that back substitution, I'm gonna say, okay, well, I have the one, two, zero, one, five, two, my goal is to make this two become a zero. So to make a two go away, I need to take negative two times row two, and I'll add that to row one to make my new row one. So that's gonna be, row one's gonna be the one that changes, so row two stays. I'm gonna show my little scratchy work. Negative two row two would be zero, negative two, negative four. Row one is one, two, Five. So combining those, I'll get one, zero, one. So one, zero, one is my new row one. And so what's nice about this Gauss-Jordan elimination, when it's in reduced row echelon form, when I rewrite, I'll have x equals one, y equals two. So then going back, the only other method we have left is Kramer's rule, and Kramer's rule uses determinants. So remember that if we want to find the x using Kramer's rule, we need the determinant where we replace the x column with the constants over the determinant of the coefficients, and similarly for our y's. So for this matrix, r, d, I'm going to draw these vertical lines for determinant. We're looking at negative 3, negative 5, 1, 2. So to find the determinant, we multiply diagonally negative 3 times 2, then minus, because that's what happens with the determinant, We'll go the other way, negative five times one. So this will be negative six minus negative five, which is negative six plus five, so we'll get a negative one. That's our big D. For our DX, we're gonna replace the X column with our constants. So that's negative 13, five. So we're looking at like the answers. And the other column will stay the same. Again, to find the determinant or multiply diagonal, that's negative 13 times two. Determinant says minus, and we'll go the other way, negative five times five. So this will be negative 26 minus negative 25, which is negative 26 plus 25, which will be negative one also. So that's our dx. We got one more to find, that's our dy. X column stays the same, so we'll get a negative three, one. Our y column will be the negative 13, 5. So to find the determinant, we have to do our cross multiply, negative 3 times 5 minus, and then we'll have negative 13 times 1. So this is going to be equal to negative 15 minus negative 13, negative 15 plus 13, so really negative 2 will be our dy. So now if I go back up here, my dx, was negative one, the D was negative one. So then that tells me X is positive one, just like we thought. And then DY, that's negative two over negative one, which again is positive two. So we get Y equals positive two, like we thought. And we have solved this one system lots of different ways, all of the time getting the same solution. Okay, we're gonna move on. We're gonna look at solving a three by three matrix 
this time. Um, it only says to use Gaussian elimination or Gauss Jordan. So let's do some row operations and we'll see if we want to kind of keep going. That's what Gauss Jordan would do. So I'm going to write my matrix, my augmented matrix, to negative 8, 54, negative 4, 1, negative 2, 14, negative 1, and then 1, negative 3, 19, negative 3. Okay, so the first thing I want, I'm concentrating on making my diagonal of ones with zeros below. That's my goal. So I can make the ones happen by just interchanging. So I'm going to interchange row um, one and row two, which would give me um, one, negative two, 14, negative one, and then two, negative eight, 54, negative four, and then row three stays the same. So the next what I want to do is make that 2 become a 0. So I need a negative 2 times something. I'm getting negative 2 times row 1, add that to row 2 to make my new row 2. So again, what that means is my row 2 is the only one changing. So row 1 stays the same, 1, negative 2, 14, negative 1. Bottom row, negative 1, negative 3, 19, negative 3. So I can write my scratchy work in here. Negative 2 times row 1 would be negative 2, positive 4, negative 28, positive 2. Row 2 is 2, negative 8, 54, negative 4. So my new row is 0, negative 4, 26, negative 2. 0, negative 4, 26, negative 2. And so the next thing that I need is to create a 1 down below here. So to make that go away, I need negative 1 times, I'll do row 1 plus row 3 this time to make my new row 3. So again, the only thing that changes is row 3. So row 1 will stay, row 2 will stay, and so row 3, I'm going to write my little scratch work here. Um, let's see, negative 1 times row 1 would be negative 1, positive 2, negative 14, positive 1. Row 3, 1, negative 3, 19, negative 3. So we'll get 0, negative 1. Um, let's see, 5, and negative 2. So 0, negative 1, 5, negative 2. So then my next goal, I got my first column the way I need it. I need to get a one in that middle part. Well, one easy way to do that is just to interchange row two and row three and then make it the opposite. So I'm gonna put one, negative two, 14, negative one, zero. So at the same time, I'm gonna make row two be its opposite. So that will be one, negative five, two. 0, negative 4, 26, negative 2. So then I want to make a 0 down below here. So to make a negative 4 turn into that 0, I need a positive 4. So positive 4 times row 2 plus row 3 will make my new row 3. So then the only thing that changes is row 3. So row 1 stays the same. Row 2 stays the same, and then row 3, do my little scratch work. 4 times row 2 would be 0, 4, negative 28. Row 3 would be 0, negative 4, 26, negative 2. So we get 0, 0, positive 6, 8 minus 2, that's 6. So we get 0, 0, 6, 6. So then the last thing that I need to do if I'm going to do Gauss-Jordan, is turn the 6 into a 1. So most of the time, if you're going to turn a, something into a 1, you divide by it. So that row operation would be like 1 6 times row 3 to make my new row 3. And so what that will look like, my matrix will have the same 1, negative 2, 14, negative 1, 0, 1, negative 5, 2. And that bottom row will be 0, 0, 1, 1. So if I stop right here, this is just row echelon form, and I used Gaussian elimination. And if I stop here, which 
I will, just to kind of ease things up. But we're just gonna do back substitution. And so we know from the bottom row that y equals one. The second row has x, or zero x, so it'll be one y minus five z. And actually, I need to step back a minute. That's not y, that's z, because we're in three variables now. So this is our x, our y, and our z. So we have z is equal to one. Our second equation is zero x plus one y minus five z equals two. So if I plug a one in, that's y minus five times one equals two. That's y minus five equals two. Add five, we get y equals seven. So we get z equals one, y equals seven. And we're gonna plug both of these into the top one. So that will be one x minus two times seven plus 14 times one equals negative one. That's one X minus 14 plus 14 equals negative one. Well, those cancel out, so we just get X equals negative one. So my solution would be negative one, seven, one. That's using Gaussian elimination. So if we go back here for number two, the answer should have been negative one, seven, one. All right, for number three, it says to use Kramer's rule, but notice it says just to find x. So remember that means that we're only gonna have to find two determinants, the determinant of dx and the determinant of d. I'm gonna do that on the other side over here. So I need my augmented matrix. Well, actually, just to find d, it's just the coefficients. So I'm gonna write the bars to indicate I'm gonna find a determinant. That's two, negative eight, 54, 1, negative 2, 14, 1, negative 3, 19. So if I want to find the determinant using the diagonals, you can do the minors or the diagonals. I think most of you guys are liking the diagonals, so I'm going to make the first two columns, 2, 1, 1, negative 8, negative 2, negative 3. So I have those repeated. So remember the way that this works is I'm going to look at the diagonals going down to the left, and each of those diagonals have to do a multiplication and then I'm gonna add what I get here. So negative eight times 14 times one, plus the last one would be 54 times one times negative three. So we're gonna have that minus, then we have to go the other way. So again, it takes three guys to be in a diagonal. We're gonna multiply those little clumps. So we'll have negative eight times one times 19, plus two times 14 times negative three, plus 54 times negative two times one. So then these little products, I could calculate them all. The first one should be, this will be negative 350. I just put that into my calculator. And then it's gonna be minus whatever I get here, which is negative 344. So what I'm actually doing is negative 350 minus that negative 344 which will turn into add. So if I take negative 350 plus 344, it ends up that my big D is equal to negative six. So then I need to find my uh, DX because it wanted me to find the X value. So I replace that first column with the answer. So what that looks like, DX will be a negative four, negative one, negative three. And then the other two columns stay the same. So negative eight, negative two, negative three, 54, 14, 19. So we could again do the diagonals. Um, I like that way. So I'm gonna rewrite the first two columns. So negative four, negative one, negative three, negative eight, negative two, negative three. And we'll do the diagonals coming from the left first. So that's negative four times negative two times 19 plus negative eight times 14 times negative three plus 54 times negative one times negative three. Then we're gonna go the other way. And it takes three to be in a diagonal. So we have negative eight times negative one times 19 plus negative four times 14 times negative three plus 54 times negative two times negative three. 
So we're going to calculate the first guy and then we'll minus whatever we get in the other direction. So you get 650 on the top and then for the bottom, this is 644. So it's 650 minus 644, which equals positive 6. So that's my dx. So if I go back, the x coordinate for this system is going to be equal to uh, 6 over negative 6, which is negative 1. Now, one thing you might not have noticed was this is the exact same system from number 2, and so we can verify x does equal negative 1. Okay, for the next few, it shows us an augmented matrix that has been row reduced. And so we want to look at it and see what the solutions are. Those are all the work is already doing done for us. And we want to know the number and what the solution set is. So what that means is we're going to rewrite each of these. This will be x plus 0 equals 3, uh, 0 plus y equals 2. So this is just a nice regular matrix. There's one solution. Nothing weird going on here. Now when you look at b, if we rewrite this, this is x equals 3 and 0, because it's all zeros, equals 2. Well, that's not true. So that tells us that there are no solutions. So that's the solution set. You can write it as the empty braces if you'd like. And so there's zero solutions. Um, for number, for part C, we write x equals 3, and then we get 0 equals 0. So what's nice about that one is that um, this is a true statement. So we know that there's an infinite number of solutions. So we just have to write what they're going to look like. And so for this one, we're going to end up that, well, really, the infinite solution is telling us that y can be any real number. But what we're saying is that x has to, in this case, always be 3. So if we write it as an ordered pair, we're saying it's always x value of 3, but then we have y where y is any real number. So that's if we write it in the set notation. And that's a little different from something else we see, we've see. we seen. I'm going to put in one more. What if we had 1, 2, 3, 0, 0, 0? How would that be different? Well, we still get the 0 equals 0, but our top equation would be x plus 2y equals 3. So we know there's infinite solutions. But let's see what they look like. It might be a little different this time because we don't just have an x value. So if we let y be any real number, what we'll want to do is write x in terms of y. So x plus 2y equals 3. If we minus the 2y over, we're saying our x's look like 3 minus 2y's. So that would be in an ordered pair. 3 minus 2a is our like expression to figure out what our x value would be if y could be anything. And we'll put that in the little braces. So that would be our solution set for that one. Okay, we're scooting over to number five. For five and six and seven, something weird's gonna happen. Um, just give you a little heads up on that. So let's look and write the augmented matrices and start doing some of our row operations. So we're gonna have two, negative three, five, three, four, negative six, ten, six, and then 20, negative 30, 50, and 30. So one of the first things that I notice is that like that last row has all zeros on them. So if just to kind of simplify some of my numbers, and I can do this anytime I want, multiply a row by whatever. In this case, if I multiply by 1 tenth or divide by 10, that would create 2, negative 3, 5, 3, 4, negative 6, 10, 6, and then 2, negative 3, 5, 3. And right now, I'm noticing kind of a weirdness that those are the same. So if I take negative row 1 plus row 3 to make my new row 3, they're going to all cancel. So my matrix, row 1 stays the same, row 2 stays the same, but row 3 will become all zeros. So I can see that I have infinite number of solutions. Now I could do some more row operations. I can't do anything else to this third row, but the second row I could try and like make a zero happen down there. So if I do negative two times row one, add that to row two to make my new row two, what's gonna happen, I'll show you my side work. Negative two row one would be negative 
negative 4, positive 6, negative 10, and negative 6. So if I add that with row 2, which is 4, negative 6, 10, 6, I'm going to get another row of zeros. So this is the case where we have all the planes are on top of each other, because look what's left, just that top plane, 0, 0, 0, 0 here, 0, 0, 0, 0 here. And so we have infinite solutions. And we're going to say, well, let's let z be any real number and y be any real number. That's kind of indicating those last two. And so then on the top, it says that 2x minus 3y plus 5z equals 3. We could solve that for x by putting everything on the other side. Maybe this isn't the prettiest. I'll show you another way as well divide by 2, and so that's what our x's look like. So we could write it that our x's are these weird fraction things, but they're in terms of y and z, and then y and z are any real number, so they could be like of that form. Or we could just say that it's all the x, y, and z, as long as they satisfy the 2x minus 3y plus 5z equals 3, which means they're on that plane. Maybe that's the easiest way. So you say infinite solutions, but then give the solution set. Okay, let's see what's going on with uh, number six. So I'm gonna write my augmented matrix, which I hope that's okay here. Okay, so um, if I'm trying to do the Gauss-Jordan elimination, I don't notice anything else that could kind of simplify together. What I do notice is that I have a row with ones in it. So if I interchange row one and row two, that would start putting it in that row echelon form. So just interchanging those guys. I have this left over here. And so then next I really wanna make that guy become a zero. So to make negative four go away, I need four times, well, we'll use the row one where we had that one in there. We'll add that to row two to make my new row two. So my little side work would be four times row one would be four, 12, negative four, 28. Row two is negative four, negative 11, three, negative 24. So I'm gonna get zero, one, negative one, positive four for my row two. So my matrix, row one is one, three, negative one, seven. Row two is zero, one, negative one, four. And row 3 is 3, 11, negative 5, 29. So next I'm going to want to get rid of this 3. So I need negative 3 times row 1 plus row 3 to make my new row 3. So my little side work for that would be negative 3, negative 9, 3, negative 21. Just multiplying row 1 by negative 3. Adding row 3 to that, that's 3, 11, negative 5, 29. We'll get 0, 2, negative 2, and then an 8. So my matrix, the only thing that changed was row 3. So row 1 will be 1, 3, negative 1, 7, 0, 1, negative 1, 4 for row 2, and then we'll get 0, 2, negative 2, 8. All right, so next I want to get rid of this 2, so that means I need a negative 2 times row 2. Add that to row 3 to make my new row 3. So my little side work would be 0, negative 2, 2, negative 8. Row 3 added to that, 0, 2, negative 2, 8. That's 0, 0, 0, 0. They all cancel out. So then this means that I'm going to have first row, same, second row, same, and then the row of zeros. <clears throat> and I'm in that Gaussian elimination, so, uh, or the row echelon form, uh, not reduced, but row echelon form, pretty close except for that, which tells me that z, well, I know there's infinite solutions because that's true, but I can say let's let z be any number, and then looking at it, row 2 would be 0x plus 1 y minus z equals 4. So I could say y equals 4 plus z. The first would be uh, 1x plus 3y minus z equals 7. So z is any real number, but look at y can be written as 4 plus z. So 
x could be 3 times 4 plus z minus z equals 7. That's x plus 12 plus 3z minus z equals 7. So now I'm able to write x in terms of z also, just like y is already written and then just z is z. So this is going to be x plus 12 plus 2z equals 7. So if I minus the 12 and minus the 2z, looks like x is equal to negative 5 minus 2z. So what I have is that my order triples will be negative 5 minus 2z, 4 plus z, z, as long as z is a real number. So those are all uh, little expressions of how we can get an x and a y value if we know what our z is. So this is what our ordered pairs look like. All right, and we have one more here. I'm gonna write the augmented matrix as a two by two. So let's have two, four, five, one, two, four. So again, my goal, one, one with the zeros. So I'm gonna interchange these two rows. So row one and row two are gonna flip flop. So we'll get one, two, four, two, four, five. And now I want my two to go away. So that means I need negative two times row one plus row two to make my new row two. So my little scratchy work, negative two row one will be negative two, negative four, negative eight. Then we have two, four, and five. Wait, zero, zero, negative three. So my matrix, row one stays the same. Row three is gonna be zero, zero, negative three. So as soon as I write that, I can see all my variables cancel out and I get something this time not true. There is no solution to this system. The last little bit is just doing some operations. So if we want to multiply, let's see, we got B times A. Let's write the sizes. This is a two by three matrix. This is a two by two matrix and then another two by two matrix. So if we're gonna multiply matrix B times matrix A, we can because the number of columns equals the number of rows. So matrix B, six, negative one, negative two, three times matrix a, one, two, four, five, three, two. We're gonna multiply a column, I'm sorry, a row times a column. So this will be six times one plus negative one times five. So remember we're multiplying now, this is adding compared to our determinants which had the subtraction on it. So the same thing times that column. So we're gonna have six times two plus negative one times three. And then we have one more column here. So that's six times four plus negative one times two. We're gonna do that process again, this time with the second row. So you know in our answer, we go down to our second row, negative two, three with the one five, that's negative two, one plus three times five. That row times that column, negative two times two plus three times three. And then the last guy, negative two times four plus three times two. So my final matrix, I tend to simplify each of those and it's a two by three matrix. So we have six and negative five right here. That'll become a one. Here we have 12 and negative three, so we'll get a nine. 24 and negative 2, we'll get 22. Negative 2 and 15, that'll be a 13. Negative 4 plus 9 will be a 5. Negative 8 plus 6 will be negative 2. So you can see that matrix right there is going to be 1, 9, 22, 13, 5, negative 2. All right, matrix AB. Well, we can't actually do that because the row with the column, it just doesn't match up. So we can't do that. Now matrix A plus B, I can't do that one either. Let's hope for a lot of these on a future test. <laughs> um, and so we can't do this one because they're not the same size. So remember when we add, they have to be the exact same size so we just add entries together. So we can add B plus C. So if we're gonna take six, negative one, negative two, three, plus one, two, three, four, to get our matrix, we just add corresponding entries. So this is how it's different from multiplication. 
So negative two and three makes one. And then lastly, three plus four is seven. So that would be my B plus C matrix. Now we can also multiply B times C. That would be looking at six, negative one, negative two, three, one, two, three, four. So we take again, this is the entire row with that column. So six times one plus negative one times three. Next entry, because we're in the next column, that's six times two plus negative one times four. Negative two times one plus three times three. Again, next column. So next one over here too, negative two, two plus three times four. So let's see, this is gonna be a six and a three, negative three, so we get three. 12 and negative four, so we get eight. Negative two plus nine, we get seven. Negative four plus 12, we get an eight again. So it looks like matrix BC will be three, eight, seven, eight. All right, two times matrix A, that's just like called a scalar times matrix A. So all we gotta do is double up every entry in A. So this is gonna become two, four, eight, 10, six, four. That was nice. Now these last two, those are just the determinants. So to find the determinant of matrix B, we're looking at six, negative one, negative two, three. We just have to do the diagonal, which will be 18. And then minus, cause that's the way determinant goes, negative one times negative two. So it's 18 minus positive two. So we get 16 is that determinant. And then for matrix C, which is one, two, three, four, we'll do that diagonal. So that's four minus the other diagonal, which is six. So we get negative two.